Hi everybody, it's Greg and I wanted to talk a little bit about our power meter because we recently had solar panels installed on our house. And so people will tell you that when you have solar panels and it's all tied in with the grid, that when you're generating more than what you're using, you'll watch the meter spin backwards is what they say. Well, this is a digital meter and the previous meter was uh, digital as well. So there's, there's nothing to spin forward or backwards, but I thought I might just quickly show you what really happens with our meter now. Okay, so the previous meter we had was also digital and it was very similar to this. Uh, it would blink the number, uh, which would show your power usage and then it would uh, blank out and then blink like all number eights and then turn off and then blink back to, to the number. This one um, just blinks back between what we're using and what we're sending out. And it's a cumulative number. So uh, when the, the number 14 appears there in the corner and then it says 498, that's how much we've drawn from the grid since this meter was installed. The other number, you see the number 24 off on the, uh, on the left side, and when the number 24 is showing up there, then it's indicating how much we've sent back into the grid since this meter was installed. And the thing that I like to look at the most then, instead of a little meter that spins uh, one direction or the other, we have these little blocks with an arrow on the end. And in this case, the arrow is pointing to the left, and that means we are currently sending more into the grid than we're taking out of the grid. It's a relatively sunny day at the moment, so we're getting good generation. That's what it looks like. It's not spinning backwards. Uh, the little blocks blinking on and off simulate movement. <laughs> but, you know, like with the old meters, the, the old meters had a little disc that spun and you could watch it go and it would go faster when you were using more electricity and slower when you weren't using very much electricity. This one, you know, the, you, you can watch as those little boxes blink on and off simulating going one direction or the other. They're going to look like they're going faster or slower by the rate that they blink. And uh, so this is what the net meter looks like uh, in operation on our house. And you might be thinking, well, your system's not very good because you're obviously using more off of the grid than you're sending back into the grid. The meter shows it right there. Um, well, here's what happened. Uh, when the solar panels were completely installed, then we had to wait for inspectors to come and make sure everything was done right. You know, you're working with red tape, building inspectors and paperwork and all that stuff. So when that finally happened, then the power company was okay with installing a net meter after they knew that the, the solar panel system was okay. So they installed the net meter, but I was instructed to then still not activate the system until I had some further email indicating that everything was okay. So even though everything was here, ready to roll, I had to keep the power off from the solar panels for, for over a week. And during that time, we exclusively used from the grid. Then when I finally was, had permission to start it all up, then I was able to start sending back out to the grid. So at the moment, we still haven't caught up uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it will happen soon because those numbers just bother me. I want us to be sending more than we're getting in. Uh, right now it's autumn, and so the, the, the amount of daylight every day is going to get shorter. Uh, and so, you know, by the time we hit December, I'm sure we won't be generating more than what we use every day. But at the moment, we are generating more than what we use every day. Those numbers on the net meter help us keep track of that. What it's really going to pay off is uh, in the springtime when the days get longer and longer and throughout the summer, we're going to definitely be uh, sending more out to the grid, which will be counted as credit towards us in the wintertime when we're using more from the grid. And, you know, the, the, the bill will even out so that effectively it'll be like we're not taking anything from the grid. We'll pay a minimal connection fee every month to the power company while we're still making payments to the folks that sell us these, uh, these solar panels. So it's all gonna work out, theoretically. We're gonna be paying just as much as we would have been paying to the power company, but instead we're going to be paying a little bit to them and the majority back to the folks that sold us the solar panels. And uh, after a time when that's all paid off, then you know we're effectively at zero. 
So um, it, it's the kind of thing you wouldn't necessarily want to do uh, if you didn't think you were going to live in a house very long. But um, I think I'm going to be here a while, and I love the whole idea anyway. I'm not that much of an env environmentalist, uh, but it does make more sense to me that I'm generating, using a portion of my rooftop, I'm generating the electricity that I need for the year. And this net meter is going to help to, uh, to even that out so that... Uh, effectively, the, uh, the power company becomes my backup battery. So I'm paying a little bit to them still for the basic connection fee. Uh, but at night or on when, it, when the weather's really bad and I'm not able to generate enough to keep up with what I want to use, then this is my battery backup, effectively. And so I'm willing to pay a little bit of money to them every month for that. And it all works out. We'll see. I don't know. Just barely started going on this. So <laughs> talk to me next summer. We'll see how, how happy I am about it all. Oh, but one more thing. When there's a power failure... Uh, because, you know, some substation blew up over there, or I live out kind of in, in, out in the sticks, as it were, and it could be that a cattle truck maybe clips a, uh, an electrical pole, and so wire comes down, and we, so we get these power failures from time to time, a little more often than you would in a normal suburban area. When there's a power failure, uh, they don't want us to be sending live electricity back out into the grid and the wires that the, that the repairman is going to try to be working with. So the way this is set now, when the grid is down, this thing shuts itself down too. And we're not sending any power out. So that's kind of a hassle. So far, it's only been you know a few weeks. We haven't had a power failure since this system was completely up and running. So I don't know what that's going to be like necessarily. I do have a generator for backup power. Uh, with any luck, if we do have power, power failures, they won't last very long. It'll be a little bit inconvenient. Maybe someday in the near future I'll get one of those Tesla wall things, which is kind of like, uh, you know, you're used to having maybe a uninterrupted power supply for your computer. And maybe I'll have something like that for the house. But uh, that's a further expense down the road. So we'll see how it works out. But, but the bottom line is people think, oh, well, now that you've got this, if there's ever a power failure, you're fine because you've got this. Well, that's not how it works. But we'll see if that, if that becomes a, a big issue that bothers me or not. Oh, and also, just to make us all feel better about what I'm doing here, uh, I've charged up these camera batteries using solar power. Uh, the computer I'm using to, to edit this will also be, um, you know, solar powered because it'll be plugged into this system. So this entire video is produced using solar power. Everything electrical I have right now, solar powered. <laughs> <laughs>